You moved to Melbourne, I think. Yeah. That was before you went to the Gold Coast. Yes. And I think when you went to Melbourne, you were still doing the R&B club sort of circuit. You were still on turntables at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah turntables in Serato. I think, was I on Serato then? Yeah, yeah. What? So what happened? As you know, in Adelaide, it, it, you know, you, there's, there's only a few gigs because it's quite small. And, you know, at that point, I'd, I, ha I had my show on Fresh FM. I think it was the jump off at the time. Um, you know, I'd, I'd won a, a best upcoming hip hop DJ at the, was it I, ITM? Some award thing, right? And I was doing, you know, I was known from my mixtapes, you know. I was like known in the streets pretty well for their mixtapes, like the jump off mixtapes. Um, but gigs were hard to come by. You know what I mean? I was st still doing gigs for free. I was still doing gigs for fuck all money. You know, I couldn't like afford to live. So it was like do my day job, DJ. And then it got to a point I'd been doing it for five years or so. And, you know, the folks were on my back like, well, well you know, when are you going to, are you going to take this seriously? Like get a fucking real job. And I was the same, you know, I want money too, you know, I want to like, so I took a fucking full-time job at that expo joint and two weeks into it, I was like, nah, fuck this. Like, let me give it one more shot. I just packed up, moved to Melbourne. I knew some friends over there, DJ KZ and, and his whole crew, moved in with him and then just started hustling, like trying to get as many, because it was, you know, Melbourne, Especially at that time, the R and B scene was fucking huge. So you know, like I was just hustling, getting as many, you know, resident gigs because you could do. Mel Melbourne was definitely a thing you could do. You could bounce around to three or four clubs in the night. You know, do an hour opener, do an hour main set, and an hour closing set, um, two three times a week. So you know, I was I. That really, that move really set everything up. I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna try to take this seriously and try pay my way from just doing that and moving to Melbourne allowed me to do that. And that was before Gold Coast. So then when you moved to the Gold Coast, is that when I guess the style of music that you were doing changed? Just before that. What, so what, like what happened, it was around the time in Melbourne. <laughs> wow. You're bringing back all these fucking memories. I, I was living with uh, DJ KZ and some friends and we were all just, we were all hip hop heads, you know what I mean? Like we, we didn't really fuck, it was all just like straight hip hop R&B sets, you know? We had the, you know, there was a bit of an arrogance to it, you know? You know, we, we're not them fuckheads that play dance music. <laughs> just that ar dickhead arrogance, but it is what it is. And, um, but then it was around that time when I, when I did, you know, get introduced to it, I started enjoying it. I started picking up like the Ministry of Sound CDs, set the, them uh, sessions or whatever. And, you know, I just started getting into it. And then um, as I was doing my third jump off, I was working on the jump off mixtape and I had the studio set up in the house. I, in secret, I was working on my, dan my first dance mixtape, which I called the Ministry of Chronic, which I then got in trouble by Ministry of Sound from. Um, but I was doing it in secret because I didn't want the people that I was living with to know that I was working on a dance fix tape. I was like, I don't know if I sh even sh I was fuck. I'll give it a shot. And then, um, at that time, I was doing monthly resident gigs in the Gold Coast, and they were always during the week because the Gold Coast at that time was a seven day a week party town. And I'd go up there, leave the miserable weather of Melbourne, and go DJ on a Tuesday night at the bedroom nightclub in the Gold Coast. And it was just n never been to Vegas before at that point. But now that I have, it was like a mini Vegas. You know what I mean? People were there just to have a fucking good time, you know, so you could play anything and everything you wanted. People were just wilding the fuck out. And I was like, and then during the day, you'd spend your day by the pool drinking and then you go to the club and it'd just be wild. And I'm like, I'm there with my mate who I was living with and we were like, man, let's just move here. If if 
this is like this on a Tuesday. I'd never been there on on a on a weekend, and I decided to move there. Like, if this is like what it's like on a Tuesday, what the fuck are the weekends gonna be like? So we moved up there, and that's when I started getting into the open format stuff, because that mashup style was coming in at, in at that time. You know what I mean? Like like dance music was infiltrating. You know, like you had your DJ AMs and stuff around that time. You know where, you know, we'd throw all styles, all genres into into your set, no matter where you played. And that was huge on the Gold Coast. So when I moved up there, I, 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 I adopted the same theory. I'm going to move there and I'm just going to hustle for as many gigs as I can, start doing like DJ lessons, teaching people if I have to, move in with a friend and like kind of, you know, my interstate gigs were picking up at that time. So I was like, all right, I'm just... If, if I can push this to a point where I can be touring nonstop, I can live anywhere and do it. So I want to live in the Gold Coast. I moved to the Gold Coast three weeks later. The owner of the club up there, the bedroom nightclub, uh, pulled me into his office. He's like, dude, we love having you here. Now that you've moved here, why don't you be our resident? I'm like, okay, cool, but I'm you know, you're touring and shit. He's like, dude, come in, DJ three nights a week with us. We'll pay you way more than i've ever been paid as a resident and anytime you go away let us know i was like fuck yeah so it was like a resident where they treated you like a guest and so from then on it just like that's when i kind of boomed off and became this open format sort of dj and that's really where that established and then like how long were you in the gold coast before you moved to moved la to sydney oh you moved to I sydney moved, yeah. after that so yeah. how long were you in the in the gold coast before you moved to sydney Four years, four or five years. And then why did you decide to move to Sydney? Just that's where the industry is. And I was never really, I, I always worked, in the hip-hop circles, I always worked out of the industry. I just did it myself, you know. I went through a few, you know, a few managers and until I found the manager that I, I'm with at the moment, who I live with in LA now. I met him in the Gold Coast. Um, but we always operated outside of the system, you know. It was like... You would go to a spot, you'd like you'd hook a gig up through like a connection that you had. You'd go to a spot, do the best you could, and then like it was reoccurring bookings, you know? So like, you know, from performance, p- performance based bookings. And, you know, I'd never we were never in the industry as such. Like it was all fucking hustling mixtapes, you know, like we don't need management, we don't need a label, none of that shit. We'll just do it ourselves. And that's kind of how I operated. Until that time on the Gold Coast when I started getting into the dance world and people started paying a little bit of attention, it's like we need to make that move to Sydney so that I'm there, that I can connect with the right people there, I can network with them because, yeah, that w- that was just the move that was necessary. It was in the Gold Coast actually where I met the Bombs Away crew who were kind of, they were kind of a help in my introduction into the dance world, you know. At that time they were like, the new upcoming group in in like Australian dance music that was firing. So, like being able to work with them, and I toured with them quite a quite a bit. I did a few records with them on their record label as well. So being like connected with them really like allowed me to like establish myself and be kind of almost like a part of the dance scene where I've just felt like a guest. You know what I mean? And so like, it just it was natural to move to Sydney because the industry was there. And then how long after that did you move to LA? I only moved to LA in Feb of this year. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I, what, what was the main reason behind that move? The same thing with moving to Sydney. The industry is there. After the whole bend over situation, at the same time when I did the bend over record with John, it was like I signed a publishing deal in America with uh, Maxwell and Carter, um, which is DJ White Shadow, Paul Blair. He's like a big pop producer in America. And he he's the guy that signed me and started the little camp. When I say our team, it's like it's like him and, and, and me and all the people that he's kind of signed, our little crew. So he signed me um, and just started throwing me in sessions, you know. He'd heard some of the records that some, like I, I showed him everything. I showed him all my demos that I'd done with people here in Australia that I never thought were anything. I thought, you, you know, you get in a session with, with an artist, 
uh, one of the records that I remember that was the, like one of the turning points he said was this song that I did with Shawnee B, right? Who, if people, if you know Shawnee B, you know that Flaunt record? At, at, like at that point, that was what people knew him for. And I thought I was going to go into the session, never really meeting him before to write shit like that. And I was down for that. But then we just got high and started listening to hip hop records for like two days straight and didn't write anything. And it was like, we, we formed this like good friendship. And so we just wrote some records, like some hip hop sounding records, some rock sounding records that still to this day, just sit on my hard drive in, in demo form. And like, they're good. But at that point it was like, what we're not going to do anything with them. It was just like an expression for us. Like, let's just do it because we're having fun. And, and Paul, the guy that signed to me, he's like, they're one of the reasons why I signed you because I could like I saw some potential in you doing other other shit besides these dance records that that people know you for, and so yeah, he threw me in sessions with like musicians, songwriters, people from all different genres, and like you know instantly you sink or swim, you know. I never thought I could write. And then I'm getting thrown in these sessions. And for a while there, I fucking couldn't either. You know, like it was all a learning process. But, you know, it's like sink or swim, you know. I started taking it more and more seriously, right, realizing that I, I've got a knack for this. I've got a talent for this. All that time that you said that I would spend collecting records and, and practicing my DJing, I then just flipped that to just what, like writing music. And so now that's where I'm at. And it's like LA is where that shit happens especially for the stuff that I'm doing and that I want to do. There's just this studio culture out there that I've never seen anywhere else in the world. Every second door in, in, in LA, I, you lift up a garage door, there's a studio there and there's like a bunch of people in the room just writing, you know. It's this amazing like culture and vibe of just creative people working together to, to come up with product. And that's that's why I had to move to LA because... You, you need to be there to be doing that out there. America's very, America's America. Like, it's like, yeah, we love shit from everywhere, but we're America. So like, come to us. You know what I mean? And it's, it's very much kind of like that. You're like, yeah, cool. Let's work. When are you in LA next? So it was like, okay, well, I got to come out to LA. So that's why I had to move there. The, the, the last thing. Oh, yeah.